Episcopalians and Anglicans around the world, and other Christians as well, to commemorate the identity of our Lord Jesus Christ as the true shepherd every fourth Sunday of Easter every year. The gospel passage for the day is always taken from what is known as the shepherd's discourse from John chapter 10. Now the metaphorical image of Jesus as shepherd defines him, as you know, as a caring, loving, and dedicated caregiver of God's flock, which is the object of the shepherd's complete attention. On this Sunday, I invite you to not only hear again how the flock listens, follows, and depends on its shepherd, but also how the shepherd depends on the flock. One of my mentors is from rural Canada. Father Francois had worked as a shepherd at one point in his life, and he commented in one of his fourth Sunday of Easter sermons that working with sheep in real life had some similarities to working with people that he encountered in his daily life. I remember him saying how no two sheep are ever the same. They can be stubborn at times. They complain a lot. And they always need or want something. Something else that I remember him saying about sheep culture was that they were nothing like what is often portrayed in religious art. Because religious art portrays sheep as being white as snow, and they're not. And then, of course, you can't see this in the art, but he said that they smell pretty awful, too. <laughs> Notwithstanding, the flock is the shepherd's responsibility, and it gives that shepherd or shepherdess a sense of purpose as they are led and as they lead the flock to green pastures and running water. I did a little research about sheep culture, sheep leadership in particular, recently. I learned that despite what Psalm 23 says about sheep following shepherds, in most parts of the world, it is the shepherds that follow the flock. The exception being, in regions of the world with extreme desert conditions, like the place Jesus was from and where Jesus worked. If the shepherd in those situations is in front of the sheep, of the flock, he leads them to water. Earlier in chapter John, in chapter 10 of John's Gospel, Jesus described the characteristics of a good shepherd. We've heard it. Leads, loves, feeds, and even seeks out the lost sheep. In today's Gospel, we heard Jesus describe the characteristics of the flock. The flock is attentive to the unique call of the shepherd. It listens and it responds. I appreciate the image of the flock following the shepherd in certain contexts and the shepherd following the flock as well because there's mutual dependence between shepherd and flock. As I reflected on this mutual dependence, I thought of the structure and of the polity of the Episcopal Church, where laity, the lay people, are elected by the people and encouraged into many leadership roles. There are exceptions, for example, here at St. Gabriel's. The congregation has never elected its vestry leaders because we are a relatively new mission church, a daughter of St. James, as you all know, which according to our polity has given the rector of St. James some oversight of our leadership. Technically, in our case, Father Philip has oversight over me. There will be some changes coming next January because at the next annual meeting, 
you will all have the opportunity to vote for the two vestry seats that we'll be opening up. And that will be a first for our congregation. And we can even add more vestry members as we see fit. In the Episcopal Church, it is the people who interview and vote, not only for their local lay leaders, but also for their bishops and for clergy. And we do that through search committees. As an ordained church leader, I am at times the shepherd at the front of the flock and at other times the shepherd following the flock. This is critical for our mutual dependence and our mutual accountability. And it is important for critical decision making. The leaders of organizations can't always be at the helm making decisions. Good leaders should listen to and tend to the needs of the people that they serve, observing how they live day to day. Those coffees that we go on every now and then, or visits to, my, to one another's homes. Understanding your context and my context, and encouraging ourselves to use the leadership skills that we have and we might not know about. You know, Psalm 23 reminds us that Jesus leads us to greener pastures, but as his representatives in this kingdom, we also have that responsibility in our communities, as I told the children earlier. Next weekend, the lay leaders of the board of this church, our vestry, will be on retreat with me. Michael Denzen, John Egan, Lisa Cusack, Aaron Rice, Peter Schweitzer, Chris Freestad, and the two newest members of the vestry, Carla Rhodes and Steve Larimore, who are, who are new interim vestry members until January. And we will spend the weekend reflecting on how the early Christian communities described by Mark in his gospel, also in the Acts of the Apostles, and also described in the letter to the Corinthians, both of them, how those folks work together to sustain that nascent faith community, the church. The vestry and I will have the opportunity for personal and corporate spiritual formation and growth, something that I continue to hear is necessary by the people, by you. We'll ponder on the spiritual development necessary for our families and for our parish community. You will witness the fruit of our work as we consider how to nourish and sustain this body of Christ as we keep moving forward. We will study, and I will offer you later in the year, through different faith formation forums and opportunities, the challenges and the successes of the early Christian church. Why? Because quite frankly, we experience the same hurdles and blessings that our foremothers and our forefathers experienced when they were building church. In the past eight months since I've been here, your vestry leaders have worked very closely with me, discerning ways to turn things around, not only financially, but also in our ministries how our ministries can be more relevant, how our name can be more prominent, how we can invite more people to this place. How can we continue to follow and lead to make our mission, encountering God, building many meaningful relationships, and making a difference in the world real, not just something that we have in the front of our bulletin. This vestry has been working arduously to ensure that multi-generational Christian formation continue to be a priority, nourishment. That we continue to explore alternative ways of reaching out to underchurched people and others in need that don't yet know about St. Gabriel's. They've been working with me to analyze our unique 
qualities as a faith community. And you might ask yourself, what could be unique about our church that other churches don't already do? I mean, church is church, right? Well, not always. You know, we're intentionally inclusive. And we make an effort to be visible in venues that are not typical for churches to be present. We're the only church that goes to Loud and Out Loud and P-Flag to support members of the community that are either gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, or the people that care and love them. As a matter of fact, our vestry members and other members of the congregation are talking about forming groups to go to this summer to the movie nights and concert nights that are held here in Lansdowne to be present. Not very many churches do that. We do that for multiple reasons. One, we want more people to know about St. Gabriel's. Two, it is evangelism. And when you think of evangelism that way, hmm, giving someone a bottle of water that says St. Gabriel's, welcome to our uh, inclusive and warm church, might be easy to do. It's not that way of evangelism that, see, that might be, we might be, have stuck in our head that's knocking on doors and saying, oh, you know, we're a Christian church. No, it's just being present. It's being welcoming and letting people know about what we have found here. Folks need to know. Those are ways in which we are unique. Now, when we talk about touching diverse people's lives, I have a clear image of Jesus doing the same. Together, the vestry and I are trying to be the best shepherds we can be. Sometimes from in front, sometimes on the side, sometimes from behind, but always with our eyes on Jesus. As a flock that also has a good sense of direction, I invite you to approach the vestry, to approach me, to let your words be known, your thoughts. Share ways that are important to you to seek knowledge and better understanding of Jesus Christ. Ways in which we can become better stewards of our gifts and talents in the future. And also let us know how you can contribute your gifts and talents to St. Gabriel's and to our community. It is not only up to certain people to keep this flock focused on the green pasture and the living waters. You also have that responsibility. You also have that accountability to Jesus. And so we all depend on one another to continue living, living faithfully into our mission of love and to serve the Lord and all the children of God, just as Jesus taught. Amen. 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 Amen.